everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Mench. And here we are now with um, with part two of the C141B Starlifter. Um, I've been cracking on here with the cockpit a little bit. I've added some uh, plastic card to the top of the instrument panel there because it's actually, um, as I showed in part one, it's quite an obvious feature. Uh, and if you remember, I've got the, the uh, nose gear bay held in there with some white tack. I've put some plastic on the bottom of the cockpit and then just that just slips in there and then we can put the two fuselage halves together like so and that sits in there like that now so when it's all painted up I mean I know it's not accurate there should be a large galley down the middle and the, the two sides split off for navigator and uh, an engineer these fuselage halves are really doing my <laughs> doing my head in because there's no location on them whatsoever um, so yeah there we go so that's uh, that's in there now and basically it looks like it's moved oh dear this is so annoying the fact that it's got no location there we go and then when we put the glaze you can see the instrument panel there is sat quite high and then when we put the glazing in the instrument panel becomes quite obvious sitting there in the glazing like so so um there we go and we can see there you can you can look in and it's all quite visible so we'll get that painted now now the cockpit as i showed you in the photograph in part one i think i'll put it up again now um it's all sort of blue and black really so what i'll do i think i'll give this a, a coat of um some blue paint first of all some light blue then perhaps paint the seats the darker blue and then we'll do some washes or whatever just to sort of uh, make it look something like it should Right, cockpit's painted. So that's been done in 36149, hell blau. This is a Revell Aqua Colour. And just heavily thinned with water and bottom with a brush. So I'll just leave that to dry. So that can go away now. Back in its drawer. Um, and I shall do the seats with this Tamiya XF8. In fact, I may not use that. I may use one of my, because Tamiya doesn't brush well. So I'll probably use one of my game colour. Yeah, here we go. Here, this ultramarine blue. I'll use that one on the on the seat. So maybe tone that down a little bit with some white. But um, yeah, while that's uh, while that's all drying, um, we could be getting on with looking at something else. So when we look at this, the we've got the cockpit halves, the fuselage halves here. We've got to put these two um, inner gear bays in. So we've got those here. So uh, where are my tiny cutters? Here they are. So we've got number seven and number four. Now it's obvious which is which because they're handed and they've got that uh, that lump on the top of them there. So that's um, that's that one done. So we'll just clean off the sprue tabs from there. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to get in the way. I don't think it is, but uh, that's obviously not that side. I also painted inside the uh, cockpit area and the fuselage as well there, you can see. Um, so that's going to slot up into there by the look of it. And it looks like it's going to sit. No, I'm not quite sure. This, this, it's got this triangular lump on it here. I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to be doing. It's actually stopping the. It's actually stopping it from going in. Now, unfortunately, when you look at the instructions, there's an arrow there that's right over where that's supposed to be. I don't think that's supposed to be there, you know, because it's actually stopping. If you look here, this part here, this rib, this sits on it and you've got the same recess on there. That's not supposed to be there. I'm going to cut it off and then uh, come along with a knife and just clean it up a bit. There we 
go. And then we should be able to put this in now properly. There we go. So that goes in there like that and seals up the bay completely. And then our main landing gear is going to go into there. OK, so it's trying to spring out. But I think once we've got some glue in there, it'll be OK. So I'll use the extra thin quick setting again. Just brush them down that joint. Hold that end in place, brush them down that joint. And then brush them around that area there. And then we can put plenty, we need plenty of glue on here, we need it to be very strong, we don't want it to fall out. Remember the weight of the aircraft will be sat on this. Here we go. So that's that one in like that. And then this one, again, we've got that lump. So I'll cut that out. And this is the kind of thing where it's going to catch beginners out, things like that. They're going to be, you know, surely it, it looks, the trouble, it looks like it's supposed to be there because it's so well molded. It's not, um, it doesn't look like a, a miss. A miss mold. It's probably an injector pin or something. <laughs> so that's going to go in there like so. There we go. Hmm. That doesn't want to sit in there very well at all. do is just sand a little bit off this bottom edge I think that's better right so I can hold that in place now just let some glue go in there Same on that side. And there we are. So that's both of them in now. Now I want to make sure they don't go anywhere, so what I'm going to do is take some of my extra thin ordinary, just put plenty of that round, just to make sure they are really properly held in place. That will really get in there and weld those in now. And there we are, that's those in. So next on here we're looking at some clear parts and it's saying 2G. Now where's the clear sprue? Here it is. Massive clear sprue. Now I remember seeing somebody saying that these these windows actually show through or poke through should I say so this is going to have to be cleaned up like so and then that's going to go in there now they don't peek through but they are shallow so I think what I'm going to do is not bother with those I think the other thing I need to do is file those out because those windows aren't actually very round at all. 
So, grab my round file. Now, when you're filing, if you've got a round file, rat tail file, and you turn it clockwise, it will dig in. If you turn it anti-clockwise, it won't dig in, and it will give you a nice round hole. If you turn it clockwise, as I say, it will drill itself in and you end up with a massive hole. And because we're not going to use the clear parts, it doesn't matter if we raise this slightly, or raise the diameter, should I say. Saving that one. There we go. Leave a nice crisp edge on them as well. What I'll do after the model is painted and all done, I will go over and I will put some um, crystal clear in here. It's this one here, micro crystal clear. You can use ordinary white glue. And just go put some on a cocktail stick in the middle, pull it round, and it will form the glazing. You'll see that when we get there. Okay, and then I'm going to get a very fine sanding sponge, like so. Just remove any raised edge that's there. Yeah, that's not really coarse enough. Let's use one of these skinny sponges. That's it. The file's just pulled up a bit of a rag on the edge, that's all. So I just want to get rid of that. <sighs> there we are. And as I say in my first video, if you'd like to see a, a video on tools and their use and <sighs> what I think you should buy and what's, you know, what you don't really need, and uh, leave a comment below and I'll put one together for you if you want to see if nobody comments there's obviously no point in putting together videos that nobody's going to watch so um, that can actually come out now that gear door that gear bay okay so that's our windows done our bays are in so basically now if we weren't now using the fuse or putting the um, cockpit in we could just glue the fuselage together now if you remember my Saturn build Something I did was made, because the fuselage was all over the place, I wanted to sort of key it together and, and, and lattice it in. If you haven't seen that, go back and have a look. It applies to many, many different aspects of modern. It does not just on um, a rocket, you know, if you've got a big 747 or something, it applies to all of those. So um, anything where you've got a long cylinder going together. So this has got no location, So, but it's fairly thick plastic. It doesn't need supporting or a lining or anything. It just needs to be, um, it just needs to be kind of, uh, just give it some location really, so it doesn't keep just falling apart. So I've got a piece of, some bits of scrap plastic here I'm going to use. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter, it's not going to be seen, so the shape isn't an issue. So all I'm going to do is just basically cut some pieces off, like so. Just put some heavy scoring in it. And then cut down like that. And then we can break them off. So there's three. And there's another three. So we've got six sort of three per side should do us. Let's go for four a side actually. I won't use that, it's a bit too thick. Uh, what have we got here? Here we go, this will do. There we are. So, right now, one thing we do need to make sure is that the plastic is the same thickness side to side. So with my vernier, I'm just going to check here, 1 1.65, 1.65, 2.6, 2.6, 2.3, 2.2, 1.5, 1.5. So this isn't going to work as well as I would like it to because I want it, to, you need the plastic to be exactly the same size. So what I'm going to do is on the thicker side, okay, I'm just going to glue them on the thicker side. And it's all it's going to do is give us some help with alignment and stop it all just 
falling apart every time we dry fit it together. Okay, and then we'll put another one here. It's quite warm today, the quick setting is drying faster than I can get a part on there. And then I'm going to put one here on top of the top of the wing. Wow, that quick setting is drying very fast. There we go. I'll put a couple on the bottom. Now if we were trying to, basically if we had a problem where one fuselage half was bigger than the other, kind of like that if you like, then I would be doing the lattice sort of system where I'd be locking everything together. But um, as we don't have that issue, they actually fit quite nicely to be honest. I'm just going to do this just to, it's just for aiding assembly really. It's not adding any strength particularly. Okay, so just put some more in there. And now we can, when we put our fuselage halves together, yeah, the glue's not dry yet. But basically, when we put the fuselage halves together, we can. Yes, you see, now this is the problem here. Yeah, what I've done here, I didn't measure the bottom, did I? I only measured the top. But we can see that this is thicker. If I measure the thickness here, 1.65, and here, it's 1.46. So we need to glue them on this half. Now we should be able to put these together with ease. There we are. And now we've got some sort of location that will hold them together. And I'm just going to check that everything still fits. everything still goes together but now it doesn't just fall apart you can uh, you can actually put it together and it won't just keep sliding around so there we go so we've got those in now and that is a great little tip for the newer modelers if you if you have got issues with location and as I say if you've got problems the best thing to do is go back and look at my Saturn 5 build um, it's early on in the build and I've actually put in the main cylinders together and I've got it all interlocking and I'll show you how I do that um, rather than we go through it all again now. Okay, so let's move on to getting this cockpit detail painted. Okay, so the cockpit's painted now, and all I've done, I've gone over the floor with some dark gray, I've gone over the cowling with some black, instrument panels black, the seats are, the cushions are a darker blue than the seat backs, and you can see we've got the carpet around the cockpit area is a lighter blue again. 
So um, nothing perfect, nothing fantastic. Let that dry now, give it a coat of um, clear, and then we'll start looking at sort of trying to sort of liven it up a little bit, with maybe a bit of dry brushing and a wash and stuff. I've got to try and do something with the instrument band. I'm not quite sure what to do. But um, let me try and sort of see if I can find an old decal or something and just put something on there just to make it look like it's it's an instrument panel. Um, we'll see. So um, so we'll call that a day now for, for today, not for this video, for today. Uh, today's still Friday and then uh, I'll be back tomorrow Saturday with some more for you. Okay, next day now and I've basically given this a quick dry brush with some uh, light grey paint and I've just scratched it off the console there so I'm going to have to do some more so I'll grab my XF1 this is a Tamiya matte black XF1 um, wouldn't normally recommend using acrylics for dry brushing enamels are better but if, it, if it's all you have and all you're doing is basically putting some paint in the brush and then taking most of it off and then <clears throat> just dry brushing around to highlight the edges and stuff and in this case to hide that bit I just scratched it's going to get scratched again because it's sticking at the top when we do the fuselage seam work and then we're just going to clean the brush off like so always brushing in the direction of the bristles so you don't ruin them and that's that done <clears throat> so as you can see now we've got this A380 cockpit is we've got the blue painted seats let's make sure it's in focus blue painted seats we've got the light blue bulkhead on the back got the blue carpets and basically it's just uh it's just so that there's something in there it's it's completely wrong um for this aircraft it should have a big galley down the back this little jump seat here is way too big um it's um you know it, it's it's not correct for this aircraft at all if you do want accuracy as i say that company i think they're called metallic details they um they do a full cockpit set for this which has got all the galley and everything in it so let's uh, get on with this build so looking in the instructions now so now we can basically for a minute return to the stock kit and not worry about um you know cutting out for the cockpit and stuff so we can forget that bit which is basically what the videos are concentrated on up to now um as you can see step one is telling us to put the nose gear onto the uh, nose gear bay roof well there's no point in doing that because you can put it in afterwards it'll just get broken off during the build so forget that here we've put the um we've put the main gear bays in we discovered that the clear parts aren't really any good so we're gonna do that after so now we can go on to getting the fuselage halves together and what we need to do is get this nose gear bay in and get some weight in the nose. So where is that nose gear bay? It's in the box here somewhere. Loose, there it is. So looking at the instructions, it's clear that the hole goes to the front. So basically it's going to go in like that and we need to make sure that hole is central. So that's looking good I'm just gonna get some of this I've got this uh, mr. cement deluxe which is a mr. hobby product and it's slightly thicker um, than the normal than your extra thins and stuff so you can sort of brush it on like this and it will stay wet for longer so now we can fit this in like so and there we go that's gone in there lovely and we can just put some more of this around here just so it capillaries into the joint because we need that to be nice and strong even though the cockpit's helping to support it so there we go it's worth remembering as well hey for health and safety with these glues when you're not actually using them keep the lids on because they uh they do give off quite a quite a pugnant odor so just checking that's going to still be in the right place when we close the fuselage up and we can see there <clears throat> need to let it dry a bit more first what I'll do actually I think I'll put some um, extra thin quick setting in there so that it just gives a chance to bite
and as I say if you are building this kit out of the box you're not doing the cockpit thing um, <clears throat> you need to make sure that this joint is extremely strong because you don't want it popping out so once you get the fuselage halves together if that pops out then uh, you've, you've had it so yeah it's um it's not a very very positive fit let's put it that way so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue this cockpit in and I'm just going to get some extra thin and brush that in there put a drop up there and a drop down here And then we'll just put the fuselage halves together and make sure it all goes in nicely. There we go. We can see there the cockpit's sat in there lovely. The nose gear bay is fine and everything's looking good. So I'm happy with that. That nose gear bay isn't sitting in there straight, is it? There we go. That should help. there we go right as with most model aircraft we need to add some weight into the nose when I say most model aircraft most model aircraft that have a nose gear obviously you don't want to tail sit like a Spitfire or something sits on its tail that's fine but something like a 747 or all the airliners we build and everything they tend to need weight in the nose to stop them becoming what's called a tail sitter so if you don't add nose basically your aircraft's gonna sit down on its tail like this um, and you need to add weight to make it stay down. Now there's lots of different ways you can do this. Um, you can get some lead strip. Um, if you know somebody who does roofing or something, you can ask them for uh, any offcuts they have. You can use a nut and a bolt. You can buy these little lead balls, which are really handy um, for going into tiny little places. Or if you happen to forget to do the nose weight, you can kind of drill a hole small hole and put the balls through a hole and then in that way um, but by far the easiest way is this lead strip and then I've got some off cuts here in an old Tamiya paint dryer you can see these are just bits and pieces I keep and they're always handy for stuffing into little places so pluses um, but this is easy to use but it's harder to get hold of these they're great to use but they do need to be well fixed in place because obviously you don't want them coming loose and rolling around in your aircraft afterwards so probably the easiest thing to do is use a nut and bolt now I'm not going to do that I'm going to use this lead strip because I've got it it's saying in the instructions we need to add 10 grams I want to add more than 10 so that's 11 grams that's 10 grams there that's 19 There we go. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get that in there somehow. Whoops. So let's just uh, see if I can get this in here somehow. So I'm going to bend this up into the smallest shape I can get it into. And that should fit in there. If I can bend it up smaller, what I'll do, I'll go off camera, I'll get this in a vice and I'll squash it up. There we go. I've decided not to squash it in a vice, I'll use some pliers so I can squash this up with the pliers and make it go into the shape I want it. Yeah, so it's too big to go in there. Will it go in there? Yeah, it'll go in there behind. So that'll just sit in there like that. that's absolutely fine and then these little pieces here can be bent up and they can sit in there
like so. Now the reason I'm going over the top, the instructions say this piece is probably a bit too big. Um, the reason I'm going over the top, the instructions say 10 grams. I never put what they say because I've learned by hard experience that sometimes it's not enough. So it's really best to um, to sort of go over the top as it were. Let's just grab my tweezers. That piece can slot in there. That piece can slot in there. And if I squash this one up, in like that there we go so there we go so that's all fitted in like so so I'll do now I'm gonna get my hot glue gun out let that heat up and then I'll get some uh, some hot glue in there okay I've made a discovery um, <clears throat> this is actually the first time I've used a hot glue gun for gluing in lead weight and I've realized that the hot glue doesn't actually stick to the lead or the plastic very well at all so what we need to do is get it in there and then let the, the glue set so that it sort of forms a lump that can't fall out. So we need some sort of locking mechanism to make sure the lead stays in place. So I've bent this, this is the one that I bent up to go in behind here. I've opened it up and made a sort of leg on it, squashed it down with the pliers and made it so it kind of hooks in there behind that one so it can't come out. So I'm just gonna put some hot glue down in here. I'm sorry, the, the cable on my hot glue gun isn't long enough to reach into the camera so I'm just going to hook that down in there like so and that will stay where it is okay and as I say we're using the the hot glue as a means of what it will do it will just set and form it into a lump that, that can't fall out really um, I'm going to add some more There we go, I've put some more in there now and I can sort of manipulate that around and let that sort of work its way into all the nooks and crannies and as I say that'll sort of lock it in place rather than glue it. It's almost like, um, you know, if you poured a, a liquid resin into a Tamiya pot, it would form into a hard lump that won't come out. It won't stick to the glass but you won't be able to get it out because it's locked in. So that's that in place there. So that's our 17 grams there of... Uh, of lead weight in the nose and that's not going to go anywhere and just quickly before all that glue sets I'm just going to check that it's all going to fit together and yes it does it fits together beautifully just like so okay so there we go right so um, all that's in now and all dried and I've been doing lots of dry fitting and test fitting I've noticed I've managed to get the cockpit slightly askew so the seats aren't perpendicular to the center line I'm not going to worry about that it's only slightly out I've also had so as you can see here remove some material from this um, front part so that I could get the, uh, the fuselage to go together properly so what I'm basically after is a, is a movement like this so that I can actually adjust things and position them properly so I um, also found that the nose gear bay um, on this side on the starboard side I've trimmed some material from this ledge because it was stopping the fuselage fitting together properly as well so that'll be a problem you're going to face even if you um even if you haven't bothered with all this nonsense about the cockpit so as we said earlier in um, part one we went over and we've, we've made sure the edges of our fuselage are all sanded and everything and there's nothing going to cause us any issues so just do the same again now make sure none of that um, hot glue we've got anywhere and it's not going to interfere so yeah there we go everything is all cleaned up all ready to go together so we'll dry fit the fuselage halves together and we will discover that everything goes together just fine just like that okay now this is being aimed at beginners now so if you're not a beginner fast forward for a few minutes um, the tools you're going to need for getting this fuselage together are some, a selection of rubber bands. These small things you can buy in like pound shops and in your supermarkets and stuff. I'd recommend against them. They're awful. Um, 
especially if you've got something which, if you had fuselage halves that are warped and your, your rubber bands are holding them together overnight while the glue dries, you can rest assured when you get up in the morning, the parts will be apart again and the rubber bands have snapped. As soon as they get near any chemicals or anything, they just dissolve. So um, better off with your good old fashioned rubber bands. Um, clothes pegs, or you can use clamps. I like to use these sort of clamps here for big industrial stuff. And you've got these plastic ones with the rubber lining, they're really good. Um, and also you get your clips like this. These are really handy for, for stuff like on, on the tail up here. You probably use one there. You'll see here, this is something I learned from Drew Manton. Um, he's got a YouTube channel many years ago. Um, reverse closed, closed pegs. These old wooden closed pegs are never very strong. So what you can do is you can reverse them. So I'll show you how to do that. You basically just take the peg apart like so. And then you put your your spring back on the wrong way. So the spring is now in that groove. And then on this side, you're just going to hook, hook this under there. And the spring sits in that groove at the back. And now you've got a much better clamping force. That's got something stuck to it. You've got a much better clamping force and also you can see if you're going to buy these wooden pegs go for the ones with the thicker spring wire rather than this thin spindly stuff because they tend to stay together better whereas these tend to just keep wandering off like so so that's how you make those okay um and it gives you a far better clamping force and also it gives you longer reach so if you get need to get into somewhere like if i want to get into that trailing edge i can if i didn't want to go in from that side or if i couldn't so there we go, that's our tools. Glues, um, I've got, this This one's actually all evaporated, this is my plastic weld. Tammy Extra Thin and Tammy Extra Thin Quick Setting over here. Um, they're my sort of go-to glues. But also for doing large areas like this, you may want to put the glue on first and then put them together. I would say with something this big, that's probably not a good idea. But we've got the uh, good old liquid Tammy cement here. Sometimes you'll see this in a white bottle, but it's um, it's much thicker. And it comes with a massive brush, unfortunately. You've got this Revell contactor liquid, which is great for this kind of thing. Unfortunately, the designer of this bottle must have been drunk because it takes absolutely nothing to knock it over. So, um, yeah, and also you can see there from tightening that the lid is actually split. So not great quality there either. This one here I mentioned earlier, brilliant stuff. Um, this is the normal Mr. Hobby, Mr. Cement S. And then this is the Mr. Cement Deluxe, which is a thicker version of it. So uh, that's also quite good. So I'm going to start off. In fact, what I'll do is I'll start off with this Revell contactor. And we'll hope I don't knock it over. And what I'm going to do, which is no dust, I'm just going to brush them around this nose area here. So we'll go sort of back to there. And I'm not going to be worried about putting too much on because we'll be doing seam cleanup anyway. So I'm going to brush some in there and hopefully that will stay wet long enough for me to get this together. So just put that together and just apply some pressure. Now I'm going to put this clamp on the top here to try and hold the back end together because it just keeps wanting to wander off and I'm going to do this glue up before I knock it over. Um, one piece of advice is perhaps with that Revell contactor glue is put it in an old Tamiya bottle if you've got one. So just easing those parts together, checking their level here and checking the nose is level. Okay, and I want to make sure that the they're flush as well, top to bottom, like so. And there we go. Okay, now what we can do now is just give that a few seconds just to bite and we're not really too concerned about the bottom we can work on the bottom afterwards it's the top we want to get right okay and now what I'm going to do is get some Tammy extra thin and just put some on there just to give that glue proper proper weld action Okay, and now that the glue is gone, what you must be very careful of with these liquid cements, don't put your rubber bands or your tape on first because what will happen is the glue will capillary under the tape or the band and ruin the surface of your model. So 
you can put your tape on and your rubber bands and everything once you know your glue's gone or started to go oh great <laughs> as me said about these rubber bands if you live in England or Britain and you have a mailman come around Royal Mail they drop these all over the pavement all the time so if ever you see them these red these red rubber bands pick them up they're brilliant okay so that's tightly clamped together now okay. now here's a little tip that I've learned only recently something I do now is get a toothpick and put it down in the joint like this okay and now what it enables you to do you can you can let, allow the fuselage to open and close and then when you can take your extra thin close it up like so and you can let the capillary action pull the glue into the joint because quite often what you'll find is if you if you've been building models a few years you'll know what I mean when I say that sometimes you sand away a joint and it just becomes a white line and that's where the glue hasn't gone in doing it this way you can guarantee that the glue is going right in through the depth of the plastic not just on the outer edge and you can see the glue capillarying down the joint just give it a squeeze it together you can see the glue in there and you want plenty in there you don't want it to be uh, you don't want a dry joint okay so that can stay together like that and straight away I can see an issue with these panel lines not lining up go I'll do the same on the bottom put the extra thin in give it a squeeze put the extra thin in give it a squeeze You can see that how that works. See, the alternative, if you don't have this this um, toothpick in there, what you're doing is you're putting your glue onto a joint like that, and it won't go right down through the depth of the plastic. It's only sort of just gluing the absolute outside edge. Right, so there you are. That's the fuselage all glued together. I've got a clamp up there, rubber bands on the front, and uh, basically all looking good. Now, what I've done, I've put some, I've got some thin super glue. I've run that down in there just to um, back up the nose. I've run some down the back of the nose gear bay just to make sure that's all in solid. Um, the other thing I've done, I've got a problem with this area here um, in that it's kind of mismatched and also it's kind of concave. Now, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be concave because it follows the dehedra of the wing or if it's supposed to be flat. There are some C141 experts out there by the sound of things. It's um, Video one has proved quite popular with some of your comments. And uh, I'm just wondering, should this be flat or should it be concave? Um, it's also quite a weak spot. It's quite um, thin and flexible. So what I'm going to do, a little something for the newer modelers out there. Do this carefully. I'm going to run. I'm going to put some extra thin super glue into this wing slot. Like so. I'm going to put too much in there so that it runs inside. Now it's run inside there. Now you can't see this in the camera. What I'm basically doing is listening to my dog bark. What I'm basically doing is running it up and down that joint. Now you will never see me use super glue. I'm just going to wipe this excess off of there. You'll never see me use super glue instead of plastic cement because super glue sticks in it, doesn't weld it. And especially in joints like this, you'll find it will crack. So what I'm doing, I'm just using this as a backing so that this joint is now welded with Tami Extra Thin and the super glue will just sit on the back of it and sort of form a shell over it. I just want to put the lid back on this super glue so I don't knock it over. I'm trying to make this fuselage stand up. Oh dear, there we go. In there, there we are. Right, so 
basically yeah the super glue will just lay in there and puddle over the joint and it will probably make it a lot stronger yeah got mismatched there it's okay there and it's okay there so yeah we've got an issue with mismatch all over this thing but uh, not to worry we've got plenty of sanding work to do um, and we can see we've got issues where these panel lines you can see this door here this rear door the panel lines don't line up um, looks like a gap there but it's not uh, the panel lines here that don't line up we've got the don't line up there um, yeah same here so yeah, we've got issues with panel lines not lining up so we'll have some scribing work to do um, or just eradicate the panel lines completely because it's 144 scale but I would like to have something there um, but yeah there we go so that's the fuselage together so I'll leave that for uh, for a few hours now to set go hard and then um, and then we'll come back and we'll do some uh, seam work on that and we can get the wings and the engines and tailplanes and everything together as well just one thing before we go guys I want to show you a couple of pictures um, one of my subscribers Alan I'm not even going to attempt to say his surname Alan let's call him Alan S you'll see he comments down below and he's bound to comment below this video he commented underneath part one saying he was going to do me some uh, special pictures he does these pictures for me and sends them to me here you can see I'm outside antics getting some uh, <laughs> getting some Mr. Surfacer and um, here I am alighting my C141 uh, or getting back on it whatever to um to fly home again with my uh, with my Mr. Surfacer and uh, here's a, the, the first one he did for me which I think is absolutely fantastic and this is um, me in the Hellcat so uh, yeah wonderful great artwork thanks very much Alan I love these pictures I'm gonna get around to it and I'm gonna share them all because they're all so fantastic so um, anyway there we are that's closing that one out thanks for watching this part two um, as I say, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you all soon for part three. I've got a product review coming up for you as well, which should be later today. And I've also got a, um, a new kit review as well. So, uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you all, and um, I'll see you tomorrow with part three. Bye for now.